My name is Brian Wish. I'm an entrepreneur, CEO, and Pathfinder. If I've learned anything in life, it's that self-discovery is a critical part of living intentionally, building meaningful relationships, and achieving the future we see for ourselves. In July of 2021, I sold all my possessions, headed west, and began a quest to live a fuller and more meaningful life. The experience helped me truly understand the power of a single moment. And through my conversations with leaders from all walks of life, I've seen how that one phone call, heartbreak, diagnosis, or lost job can transform the entire course of our lives. In this podcast, I sit down with entrepreneurs, influencers, and experts across industries to talk through the events that changed everything. Together, we'll relive the make or break decisions, hard conversations, periods of despair and hope, chance encounters, and everything that followed. Bob Bodin is one of the nation's most respected talent search executives, having conducted hundreds of searches for Fortune 500 companies, entertainment entities, professional sports organizations, nonprofits, Olympic bodies, and universities, among many others as president and CEO of Eastman and Bodine, named by the Wall Street Journal as top recruiting firm in college sports. Bob has shaped the leadership teams of the NBA, MLB, NFL, and NHL franchises and league offices, in addition to university athletic departments and conferences across the nation in the PGA Tour, USTA, PBR, U.S. Olympics, NASCAR, UFC, and sports-related nonprofits, among others. Bob is the best-selling author of The Power of Who in Two Chairs. He is a frequent speaker at universities, corporations, conventions, conferences, and workshops, and is currently on the advisory board of directors for the Positive Coaching Alliance, the College Football Assistance Fund, and the Cox School of Business at SMU, his alma mater. When Bob was a young professional, his father gave him a piece of advice that opened the doors to an entire career and life philosophy. Hear this advice and how it shaped Bob's career today on The One Away Show. Bob, welcome to the One Away Show. Man, I'm so great, so great to be with you, Brian. I'm I'm really excited for this. Yeah, well, likewise, we've we've had some really splendid, meaningful conversations since the yeah. summer. Thanks, Sean McGinnis. Uh and uh Bob, uh yeah, absolutely thrilled to have you here. So what is the one away moment that you want to share with us today? You know, I'm a person who believes in moments, uh, you know, that happen in your life. And uh, and I'm a person who also believes that you get lots of them. So there's so many people who felt like they had their moment and then they don't get another one, which is in itself a great learning concept to us to talk about at some point in, in, in when I'm with people and training them and and doing things. But I would I have so many, but I want to I want to hit on one that normally I don't do. And that is that when I first uh, so my dad started the executive search industry back in 1967 out of McKinsey. And and so my dad was my best friend and my he was my dad. He was now I'm going to be in his business. And he's a he's a Notre Dame guy. He's a Mensa. I mean, he can do a crossword, New York Times crossword puzzle in in, you know, like five minutes. And I'm on spit and uh, he's just got skills. And so. When I first joined, the very first thing he said to me is that was a a kind of a trajectory moment that changed so many things in my life was he said, I'm going to we're going to what our firm stands for is three things. And I'm going to I want to talk about these and I want you to write them down. So I got my pencil out, you know, (laughs) and I'm sitting there going to say, "Okay, so what is it? And I'm thinking because he's he's so smart and because like he could do a McKinsey test and never miss one. Um, and, and, and still be a normal guy. His first thing he said to me was make friends. Okay. So, wow. Okay. So this is what the firm's business is based on. Make friends His number two. He says, help your friends in every way possible. Okay. And so I'm thinking, wow. Okay. And then his number three was, don't be surprised if you do a lot of business with your friends. And so it's such a an unbelievably simple and yet such profound moment because business has been taught our whole lives that friends and business are taboo. 
that that we're supposed to we're supposed to declare and I have to disclose that we're friends at this major Fortune 50 company because if I if I don't, then you could get fired because you're doing something with your friend and and da 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 da. da. And my dad said, No, I reject that. <laughs> The answer is we're going to make friends and we're not just going to make friends. We're going to help these friends in every way possible. And every way means every way so that when you're down, you're downtrodden. And I'll never forget when my dad got into the search business just before that, he was out of work for like six months. And and uh, he every single day he got dressed in the morning when we were kids and like he was going out to work. And then he would turn around and come back and do his job search because he never wanted us to be like nervous. And it was just a totally different generation. And and when I started to work for him, he turned to me and he said, now, listen, if someone comes into our office and they're out of a job, do you understand what that feels like to, to be out of a job or to you? You were so caught up in the fact that you had something, you were the champion for your family and now you're not and you're feeling weaker, you're feeling you're you're. Your mind has gone into the tormentors where all of a sudden they can just beat you all the time and you feel less. And he says, what you're going to do, Bob, is you're going to go out to that person. You're going to put your arm around him and take him back into the office, get him a cup of coffee. And he says, and he says, he says, Bob, it's everybody has a dream and it's your job to find out what that dream is. And he says, that's what you're great at. And that's what you'll be great at. And he says, we're going to help them in the short period of time, get them to that. And, and I would tell you that starting off in that measure, that really was then the whole reason I went into writing books and the whole way that I do business is that, I mean, 88, 89% of my work is repeat. And so I don't work today. And I, in, in executive search and started up as we'll talk later about sports or anything else. But I don't work with anybody in my business that we wouldn't call each other friends. And and even in the short period of time, Brian, that we've known each other, you know that I'm going to finish my call telling you I love you. And why? Because and there's there's 180 words in the Greek language for love and they're all better than like. <laughs> and and we can't be successful in business at what we like, we have to love it. So that changed my life right there in one swoop in something, again, that made me more proud of my dad, you know, more uh, more proud to be part of Eastman and Bodine that would actually help people, right? And show them in a way and make sure that we're not just doing a, a fit, but we're, we're finding something that's got epic qualities to it. Hmm. Always, always just straight wisdom from, you know, you, Bob, you know, what I, what really stood out to me and what you were talking about was, it seems like, I, I mean, two, two things, right? One, your, your father was just clearly an impeccable person with relationships and, you know, creating a way for people or helping them find a way uh, for themselves that they've always wanted to get to. And, and you clearly embrace that. And then some, and then. The, what a simple philosophy from Mackenzie, make friends, do, you know, support your friends and maybe you'll do business with your friends. Right. So, you know, uh, it seems like you've blended uh, both of those. Now I have a question about, you know, your father um, in, in particular, you know, what was, I mean, you, you grew up with him and you watched him and, and observed him. What was it about your father that made him so good with people and relationships and being able to kind of pinpoint maybe that North star trajectory and people and, and then him wanting to help people find it. Yeah, that's such a great question. And so one of the things is that you always see in, in, in great people. And of course I saw it in my dad was energy. And so he had an ability, you know, you can't see energy, but you know, when it enters the room mm. and, um, and so it has this, this personal environment, if I could do, it's just like it's around you and it's invisibly transmitted through the phone, through our podcast, and everyone knows it the moment they start to hear what is about to happen because it's going to be epic. And my dad had this individual quality of not looking past you, but looking at you listening to exactly what the heart of the question and the issue that you had, and he would know it. And then boom, his goal was to try to help you, uh, to try to encourage you, to try to, to remind you that uh, 
that last job, you hated that job. Congratulations that you're not in that job. I mean, this we're about to do something great. Why would you, you know, don't don't respond to that. Who cares what they think? The answer is this is where you're going. And so he was always looking for for who you really were, right? And mm-hmm. and and to get a, a flavor of that. And so I think one of the things right off the bat, my dad loved what he did. And so when you love what you do, it has this aura, <laughs> this glow about the fact that you're passionate about what you're doing. And every time you talk, so like when you're on a telephone call with my dad um, and you call, he goes, hey, Brian, it, it's up. It's the octave goes up when he's because he's so excited to talk to you. How are you? And so instead of hello, Brian, <laughs> And you go, oh, great. <laughs> well, I got to go through this. It's like I'm in the dental office or something, you know? <laughs> and yeah. and so so when people have uh, energy and they got love and they're going to make time for you, right? They make this moment in time, even if it's small. I mean, the only other person I ever met that had that capacity, I had a chance, my dad was was would go to lunch from time to time with Ronald Reagan when he was in in LA and uh, when he was running for governor and to sit with Ronald Reagan he would put his hand on your on your shoulder and and you would have a moment just with Ronald Reagan i mean i mean holy cow it was it was momentous and so those kind of qualities where you're actually in it and you're with something if like if you were in a in a in a conversation and 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 I'm my dad's in a conversation with three people, and you're just standing outside over here, wanting to come over, etc. My dad would stop the conversation and say, "Brian, come on in here. Let me tell you where we are." And he goes, "Hey, you know, you know Phil and Tom and Jay, you know, boom." And then now he's in it, and now he's got it, and now you feel like, "Holy cow, what just happened? Did he just like enter me into the group?" Yeah, because there was no one too small, no one too high, and of course. When you're around great people, you want to be like them. The energy, the glow, you know, all these things you're describing. I mean, you you feel that uh, right. through the voice, through, you know, being with someone in person and it's contagious. And, you know, if you're a father, right? I mean, when he set that example for you and it sounds like such a visceral way, but he gave that gift of hope and energy to other people, Uh and, and, and you got to see that first hand, uh, and, and that's special growing up to have a father who is such an enabler and influence, right. That shape sounds like your trajectory. Oh yeah. My, my dad was funny. So he also had, he could use humor. People who don't do humor shouldn't do it. But if, they, if you have humor and you know how to do it, we, one time we we're in Chicago at the, uh, at a university club in Chicago. And we take this guy who's, we're trying to get a search from. And it's me and them. We're getting breakfast. We're coming in, and the guy's sitting, about to take some orders. And and uh, and the, and this guy, who's the potential client, turns to my dad, and he and he looks at the guy, and he says, "I'm going to have berries, okay." And then he looks at my dad, and he goes, "Now listen, Frank, I just don't do retain search. I mean, I just don't do that. And, and so we probably can't do a search or anything today. And I'm sorry if I just kind of led you on or anything, but we can't do this. And then my dad looks at the waiter and says, cancel the berries. <laughs> and the guy just startled. And he goes, oh, no, I'm just kidding. We're, we're just gonna have, totally great. You're going to have friends. And of course, at the end, he gives us the search. Right. Because you humor done correctly. Hmm. Um endears you to people mm. right mm. and and so my dad never came in it with some thought like hey uh i he's he was always in for the relationship and not the deal mm. yeah and of course that's always impressive yeah no i mean uh you know it's i grew up in a very give first environment and uh you know from my mother and uh who, who gave me your book and uh i've always you know respected and built my best relationships with like to your point people who give and then you you do potentially business with that but it, it doesn't start there it never starts at no. a level you said something that i want to tap into and i don't want to advance too quick down down your career journey but you said that your father could really 
see into the who of people, right? And, and, and in a world that's so digital and automated for you know job placements and all these things, like sure it works, but like to your point, there, there's an element of really understanding uh, the essence or energy of someone at, at a core level. And then there's the ability to, to match or pl place, right, a search because you truly understand the fundamental of who somebody is and what they're looking for. My question to you is, how do you do that, Bob? Like, what is it? You've done this throughout your career so well. You know, what's, what, what enables you to really see into someone in that way and then find the connection point that they can go thrive in this world? Because that seems what, what you're all about. 100%. So the, the key to start is that you're in first in the portion. I never start a telephone conversation. I never do a coffee and breakfast. Well, we're not just getting to know each other. That I'm finding out about your family. I mean, to some degree, if if someone's out there and they're looking for jobs, I mean, the very first thing you're really doing is if you're going to go in for a meeting, you should know more about them than they know about you. They're probably not looking much at resumes because people hire people, not resumes. And but if I knew everything about you before we even started, I knew where when you went to school, I knew that you had this job. I find that. There's interest. I don't know how many kids you got. I know what associations you've been in. And so it's always a, when you're in a meeting, it's it's not about being interesting. It's about being interested. And so I'm interested in people. Uh, and so when you're interested, you listen. And and today, if I could ever say something that's profound is listening today equals love. I mean, no one listens. They're so busy in their mind that it totally masquerades as effectiveness, never hearing what the thought was really going. And so my dad and and when I did it and as I started to see it, my dad, my dad would quickly tell me as a son early and I got in this business, oh, you're going to be so much better than me in this business. Now, that's really intriguing. I go, what are you talking about? You created this industry. <laughs> and he goes, no, no, no. I'm good at some things. And I'm and I'm and I'm really good, but you're good at all these other things. And and your personal side, the personal qualities of an individual transcend the technical. And if you would try to really get to know what that motor is there, I mean, that's the whole key to this whole aspect of being hired and getting campaigns and winning your wife and <laughs> your husband and for people who are doing it. It's, you know, going out and looking you know, going out looking for friends, you find it's really hard. But if you go out and try to be a friend, now then you find they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> and so there's this quality in business that when you sit and get to know someone and you create an environment, so interviews are fake. The whole concept of, of, of search, in my opinion, was fake. I wouldn't get involved in an RFP. If you said, I've got six firms and I'm going to do it, I'm out. Unless you're hiring me and we don't do it, we didn't connect. I don't need that piece of business. And I'm so I'm not doing that. And so I developed personal relationships with the, someone. And I, I I was doing a I was doing a talk the other day and I told him I and I wrote it in my book once that it takes five times to call on someone to get their piece of business. Now, 50 percent of Americans quit after the first call. OK, 30 percent quit after the third, 10 percent quit after the fourth. Only 10 percent go for the goal. Right. And the, and the gold is there, but they're not going to persevere because they're in it for the deal, not the relationship. And so I go, I meet people. If I fly into New York, I do what's called a who party. And so I invite seven of my friends in New York. And I always bring one person that I know is really big that they all want to know <laughs> somebody in sports, somebody who's ep who's like epic. And I'll bring them in and they'll all have thinking this is all like going great. And everyone, my whole goal is that all of them get business with each other. Hmm. My whole goal is that my who friends, I want you to get my who friend that I know if you if, look at it, he likes me, he's going to like you. And then you should do business with him. And then if we really did life that way with our friends and everyone just passed the business around to each other, we'd all be rich. And yet no one does that. So we have to go out to a bunch of strangers. It's the stupidest process I've ever seen in my life. And the answer is we don't even like them. And, and they are never going to treat you well in this process. So what's so cool about a process where if you do it, so I, I immediately looked 
on this five things, okay, uh, to five calls, I looked through my my call list of how many people I had called four times and quit. <laughs> I immediately found there were two. And I flew out immediately to meet them. And I said, okay, so I just read this book. It said, if I call on you five times, I get your piece of business. And they looked at me and said, I hope this isn't our fifth time. <laughs> And I said, of course it is. And of course, I came away with $248,000 worth of business in two calls. So what's the point is that one of the things that you get in life is if you had good mentors, right, in your life, they can pass on a lot of stuff that help you leapfrog people who are in your path mm -hmm. because they're giving you insight and wisdom and stuff and you're watching them i mean the greatest thing is that my dad always surrounded me with great people so i would know what greatness looked like how they responded to trouble how they responded to all of a sudden a a situation that was unfair how they would how they'd handle success how they would handle, you know, could they, how would they handle if they're really, really busy and how would they prioritize? And if you got somebody who would, you, I mean, I come into your office, I give you 16 things to do. The first good question is, which one first? <laughs> you know, and, but if you didn't have a mentor, you could be doing eight of them and think you're doing a great job and you're not on anything that I really wanted you to do. And they weren't really good. So a mentor is like brilliant in life today. And of course, you know, one of the things in our in my book on the power of who I, I spend a lot of time is personal board of directors because it's the ultimate strategy. But discernment is something that's passed on. It's kind of a gift. I spiritually just believe that God gave me a gift that I usually can tell in the first five minutes who's going to win. And and a lot of it comes from this point that you that we started with was energy, love, and time. Mm. I mean, the worst thing that you could do to lose a piece of business or to lose an interview is is a thing called double mindedness. It's when you're thinking two things at the same time. So, should I really leave my job? Should I really like this? And so I'm kind of thinking I don't know if I really want this job. Well, the interview is over in five minutes for every CEO. They know in five minutes. So like you come in and you're not all in and you're not coming with a plan because if you don't have a plan, someone's got one for you. And I don't and you're you're heading out the door, bud. And so this is like simple stuff. And so I spend a lot of time with my candidates preparing them. So I, I don't know if other search firms. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's as my client, you want my candidates to be prepared the best to give his best in the interview. I don't want to see his medium. I don't want to see him nervous. I want to see him not prepared to what the heck I'm doing. I prepare my candidates to know everything about my clients and what they're doing and see if they'll do it. And still, no matter what, one is still going to shine above everybody else. Always. And if I had you in the room and I'm doing the five best, if it's, if it's just happened to me in sports, although I do just as much business, just as much in some other categories, if I had the five biggest coaches in the world, you and I are both going to know who won. And you're going to look at me and go, was was that not unbelievable? Yeah, because when that person walked in the room, we, we know he's going to win the home visit or she is, right? Yeah, Bob, you know, I, I mean, when you were talking, I mean, just kind of chills inside in a way because uh you know i've been hearing more and more about some of the best leaders uh and, and this most common thing that keeps sticking out is they're not looking at resumes they're not looking at skills but it's they're looking it's like a feeling they get or the way like a facial recognition of like do they have that kind of it factor do they do they bring it all like can you sense that uh, and that's, and it's like a feel they get from someone uh, versus a on paper. And like, you're describing exactly that. We just hired one of our biggest hire to date. And I did, we've interviewed a hundred people in the last year. We finally pulled it off, but like, I just knew it hit me so hard and it was such an energy. It was like so, great. so strikingly obvious. And it's like, so when you say that, it's like, it's so validating because I've heard that four times now in the last six weeks. I mean, and I've never heard it before, or maybe you're just, you know, when you're ready to listen, things show up, but um, it, it's neat that you're taking the time to prepare, you know, your people of how to be all in, not double-minded um, and, and you, you care to help them get there. Um, so thanks for going on the tangent. And it also makes sense. Like 
your process of how you see people and the questions you ask and the questions they ask. It's it's uh it's deliberate and clearly very intentional. My my question for you, Bob, is you know, your dad was this this role model. He he showed you how to you know build relationships. He had started the company and so you were going to be a lot more successful in it. Like what made you join alongside him? What made you say, I'm going to pick this path versus I'm going to go out and do my own thing, you know, like why did you uh, join, join them and, and keep building what you've built? So I never really thought I was going to get into executive recruiting. I mean, I, my dad, when I, when I first got out because he did executive recruiting, he wanted to make sure, which I think I would inspire all dads, all moms to try to do with their kids is he turned and said, Hey, I've got, I have seven really, really impressive friends who are running something. And I want to set up a coffee with you with these seven. And then I'm going to prepare you to come in and get ready to sit with someone like this. So you're comfortable and they get to know you, you get to know them. And then they talk about their business and you then tell them things that are interesting to you. And so when I did that, that was just fantastic. It just was a game changer, right? I had two offers from Procter and Gamble. I had an offer from this. And so my off first one, I ended up with going with Carnation, which is now Nestle's, but I did sales for them a little bit initially. And then I was, a, I went in and became kind of a, a brand manager in Los Angeles for a, a great friend of mine uh, that I ended up with, uh, Bill Hardikoff. And then my, the bigger boss above even was a guy named Roland Hansen, who's I'm on a board now. And Bill, Bill had a great career and then it ran the Birmingham Barons with Michael Jordan coming on his team and all that kind of stuff. And Bill's, Bill's a, one of the, one of just a great market. Roland, ran Neutrogena, had a global sales marketing, and then created the name Windows for Microsoft. And of course, is a superstar. And of course, I'm on a board with him now. And of course, we started together. We should we should do life together later. And we love it. Um, what got me was I got into something and and you're just going to do dog food and cat food and this and Contadina ketchup and this and one or the other. And you're going to go run this to this to this. And I'm a people person. And I I looked and said, I'm 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 I could get my quota done in sales in three or four days, right? And and be their top sales guy. And then and then they they didn't want me to get the next job because I didn't like doing their paperwork. And so I, you know, they would always and and, and I was frustrated. I went to my dad and I said back when I was young, I said, so they're not gonna let me do this. And he goes, so really, so how long does it take you to get your stuff done? I said, I don't know, three, four days. And then what do you do on, on the fifth day? I said, so he says, now, listen, would it be smart if you write down all the successes that you did and, and all the stuff that you think you're going to get so that your boss gets all the credit and he gets some superstar and you make him a star? I mean, isn't that, isn't that your job, Bob? Well, yeah, but I'm not that smart yet. <laughs> and it's good to have a mentor. <laughs> and so I took dumbass off my forehead and and did that. And it was, of course, promoted in a month and I moved on. Right. And so but along the way, I, I all of a sudden I just looked at my dad and I said, I'm not doing that. And he goes, I'm starting a Dallas office. I could have another guy come in and teach you a little bit about the biz. And he says, you're no one that your age is in this business because you had to be this world came from consulting, right? It came from a big running businesses. And my dad really set up Eastman and Bodine, a, a guy named Tony Eastman, who used to run head of human resources for all in Montgomery Ward. And and the two of them, and then my dad became the CEO because he was just, I mean, that's just what he, he was created to be. And he could just bring in so much business. And we had off Chicago, New York, LA, San Francisco, 15 countries in Europe. And, and so I started Dallas and he just said, go make friends. And so I just jumped into SMU where I went to school and I got on their alumni board. I got in leadership Dallas. I started getting charity stuff that all of a sudden I could do anything I could do to, my dad said, to serve. Go serve people. Now that's not bad for me because all the way I went through college and I was a waiter and I became then head waiter of a, of a, of a, of a restaurant called Daddy's Money. <laughs> and so what's so great about this is I don't know as a CEO of an executive search firm, I'm not sure my job's any different than being a head waiter. 
okay? You got to see the whole restaurant. You got to see who doesn't have a drink and something went wrong. You got to see who needs chips, who needs bread, how you're going to print to do this, how you're going to print, you know, show the wine. It's, 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 it's pretty similar to what I do in my whole job. And so I tell, I made all my, my girls go become, you know, waiters. And, uh, you know, in, in various jobs so that they would learn how to work in chaos and make it seem really smooth for the customer. It's neat that you recognized, right, Procter & Gamble when you were in sales. <laughs> You're like, you can learn, you can get promoted, but maybe there's something more. And then, uh, you know, go join the dad in Dallas. And, you know, I love that he said, go make friends. And your first instinct was to do the things you did, uh, to, to, to build those relationships. And, uh, uh, it's, it's neat. You know, I think most, not most, I think there's a lot of people, you know, who they want to go a different path than their parents, or they, they, they just don't want to take the same path, but you, you know, you did go your separate direction for a while or a bit, and then you, you decided to, to join back on and or join, join him in that and, and be able to build a business with them. It's interesting, as you say that, though, one yeah. little add on is that so executive search is based on industries that you do. And and I, there's a lot of them. We were generalists. So I jumped in initially into real estate because it was young in Dallas. It was hot and everything. And everybody was, you know, 28 and they were, you know, running the whole aspect of head of development for commercial or residential or, you know, various aspects of, of multifamily. And they were, some people were doing land and this, my dad had never done any of that. My dad was doing Revlon. My dad was doing, you know, was doing all of a sudden big time bell helicopter and various things and so many different things from so many different, you know, Raytheon and, 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 you know, he was doing, air conditioning companies and all this other stuff. So even though the difference is that what he intrigued me with was you get an MBA, you get a master's in business administration um, every year in executive search because I get a chance to be around the greatest people of an industry. I get to take notes of how they did it. It was like I'm Dale Carnegie and I get to go back in my day or, you know, and I go to, I, you know, I'm sitting and I'm writing something and I get to see who did it, how they did it. And I get to do that for 20 years before, you know, 25, 30 years before all of a sudden I write a book and I've already set, been around the greatest people in the world. And you could be in a small little $20 million companies or four, five, six billion, you know, hundred billion dollar companies. And again, Great people have similar qualities. And once you figure those out, that you're going to be, you're going to have a whole level of accountability and hard work, and you're going to have character and integrity, and you're going to do it right. And you're going to be on time and you're never, and you're always going to be ready and you're going to be nimble and you could pivot. And if I change all your idea and your search totally goes wrong, are you going to, are you going to cry? Or are you going to go find me five more candidates? No, I, I, I always, I hate, I never assume. I think that's the word. In fact, I've, I've done an acronym of, of unassume this, you know, that I take people through in a conference sometime. And the first you of unassume is you were not paid to assume. Mm. <laughs> so I assume everything's going to go wrong so you can plan for the best. And I think it's just a great quality. And of course it made me significantly more successful in executive search because they wanted to know if, if like, did I put all my eggs in, in, and candidate number one. And I, I mean, I just am finishing a search for a vice provost, I mean, of academics and admissions for a major university. And I had never done one of, I'd done one, but it's been a while and I, I wasn't up to speed and I had the perfect candidate right off the bat and we thought it all the way through. And then on the day that person's going to accept his, his, like his grandmother dies and trouble happens and da da da, and he can't end up moving. But thank goodness that occurred because I found the best candidate so much better than that one. And that's why I love this business. I just love this business because it's a puzzle and mm -hmm. I'm going to find you someone who's not just good because you should never hire an executive search firm if you if they're just going to do good. We got to find Epic. Epic makes you so much money. And so and I tell candidates all the time, I said to, when I talk to clients, I said, we don't need a resume. Let's talk about the five things you should be looking for in a great candidate. So having you just finished doing this for your own firm, here's the five. One, great candidates want to go where they're celebrated, not where they're tolerated. 
So the atmosphere that you permit determines the product you produce. And so you should have, as a client, buzz happening, excitement. People should be celebrated, right? It just creates it. Number two is they're looking for great tools. The number one tool, besides benefits, all the stuff and budget and all the people and everything, the number one tool anybody wants is they need to be empowered to do the job. Number three is it, it's got to work for our family. I mean, I've got to have kids. I want to coach my kids. I want to do this. I want to be a life. I don't want to be a, a Robotron. You know, I don't want to sit there and all of a sudden get into it where all of a sudden I'm having a nervous breakdown because I'm on a flight and doing 247 days a year and I'm and I'm remote or something. And I can't meet people. All this stuff is crazy. Number four is I want to create great people. They want to create a legacy. They want a championship. I mean, they, there's nothing about this that we don't want that. And then last is they want to be paid well. <laughs> they want to have an equity position if they can or bonus based on, hey, I don't want a ceiling. So if I just kick butt, what if I did double what you have? Do I get paid more? Well, yeah. Yes, I'm going to. I'm hoping. Go do that because the same thing works on the other side. So let's just say what you want in a candidate. One, you better come in and celebrate me because I'm going to have them prepared to do that. Two is they got a toolbox you haven't got. Three, they're going to join your family. Four, they're going to create a legacy for you. And five, they're going to make you a lot of money. Now we've got epic happening, right? And that's just a, that's just a, was a little add-on, sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, look, it's, it's a great add-on. And, and I think to your point, it's people tolerate, um, you know, what, what, what kind of shows up, you know, in the weeds is like what you tolerate unless you can really set the expectation or standard around like what is that you want. And, you know, I think it's a leader's job to communicate that. It's also, um, you know, how, how do those processes go throughout an organization or, you know, the search level. It's like, like you said, you're hiring for Epic and it's your job to spot Epic and match it with the client who's hiring. So, and, think- and, and, and across the board, people today after right. a pandemic, after the pandemic, I mean, 80 some percent of people now today are, are have lost all their energy and they only have like 12 percent in reserve. And so that I could stop what I'm doing, as you and I have talked before about, I could just stop and just do talks everywhere because people want me to come in and revive their people. And I, you know, I get everyone hugging each other in the first three minutes. I got everybody telling people they love them. And then I got people all of a sudden rethinking about how they can serve and how they could do something epic within their own company. And when people all rally together and figure out who they are, who they are in the path they're called, something just magical happens. And of course, that's the thing. I mean, today, you know, it, it, 69% of the country believe that a bad day at the beach is better than a good day at work. I mean, 80% of the country are not using their number one talent. So that means we're spending billions of dollars training people in jobs they don't want to do. Mm-hmm. And 62% of the country is getting divorced. Why? I don't know, because they're coming home and they like, I don't know if you remember the old Saturday Night Live shows, but they come home joining Saturday Night Live Weiner family because they have a, they've been so positive all day long and they got to just dump it on their mate, you know? And so no wonder they're getting divorced. You're, right. you're, <laughs> Quit your job. Go do something you love. And of course, that's the key to life, right? Doing what you love with people you love and a place you love where your family loves it. You get to do it for all the right reasons. Yeah. No, Bob, it's it's a, it's a wise, it's a wise point. And uh, giving people jobs they love and putting them in environments, they're going to thrive, as you said. It couldn't be better. One, Bob, you know, you, you speak with such care and passion. Like you are doing the job you love. And I'm sure along the way that you have, had some moments that you've been extremely proud of, uh, of a placement where you look back and it's the perfect puzzle pieces came together, as you said. Yeah. When I, when I say that, does do any stories of the past recent examples come to mind where you were just absolutely thrilled about the placement and then the result has also transpired into something significant? In the world of business, I placed, I just did the head of real estate for all of Hunt Oil. And so no one really knows that first Ray Hunt could be one of the greatest people in the world of Dallas and Texas. I mean, he's one of the most charitable, loving, most significant person in the city of just making things happen. And he had hired some other search firm to do the search for his head of real estate, president of real estate. And then, of course, it didn't work for them. So 
uh, one of their fantastic guys they got in their company who's uh, who's runs the whole real estate side is is a guy named Chris Kleinert, who I just again, who could be one of the with the greats, but one of the great executives in the city. He and them I bring me in to talk and then he turned to me, he goes, hey, so listen, I'm old. We got to do this quick. <laughs> I, I can't wait six months. And I said, I think I can fill that job in four weeks. And he goes, what are you, are you, are you kidding? And so, and so I said, no, I'm not kidding. And so the hard part about this process is, and I do this search in, in such a way that could be so epic. I brought in a guy who in the first year just moved all of Goldman Sachs from New York to Dallas, 8,000. It's, it's the biggest real estate deal for all of Dallas. He's 34 years old. He's just a superstar. He's not somewhat good in the interview process. I mean, they so loved him. <laughs> when I when the candidate left just to go look for something, Ray Hunt hugged me and kissed me. <laughs> and we knew, as everyone knows, what I love about an interview when things go interview. So in my interviews, I don't know if they happen around, but in my interviews, the whole committee or the, the people around will start high-fiving each other in the room going, holy cow, seriously, close the deal. Don't let this reverse out of the room. When I put in, I just put in Deion Sanders into Colorado. I mean, <laughs> can anything be more epic for the for for the University of Colorado, the whole city of Boulder, the whole aspect of 14 million in, of new sales in tickets? But what's really big about Dion, which he came to me like seven years earlier to kind of learn and say, he and, and one of my other partners in my office is that, how do I get into coaching? And we got him to that level. He gets a fantastic opportunity. And I was waiting for the moment I could, when he finished that, to put him into a power five, right? And and there was lots of jobs he could do. And, and but this was the one. And so not only is he a great person who's a who's got passion and energy and love and time i mean he's got that in highest level you could possibly have but he's not a he's not prime time with everybody he's he's a yes sir positive high integrity he's calm on the sidelines he loves his his kids he those are like his sons and he does things. I mean, he does things that are epic for the families. Um, and so this is a process for him. It's not about, I, he knows he's going to get them to be the best version they can be, uh, but it's a process for him. And and what's coming for Colorado in the future is is beyond epic, but uh, they play, uh, they're, they're rolling in UCLA this weekend. So it's going to be interesting. And then Oregon state. And so they got some tough games ahead and I'm, but I, I just, I can't give you higher accolades for a person you'd want to have your son play for. It's just uh, every grandma and mom in the country all like that as well. And I, I mean, I just put in a, I just put a candidate into Liberty University, Jamie Chadwell, who's seven and O since he started mm. um, and Liberty's, you know, one of the most successful universities in the country, one of the great schools to go to. They have 150,000 online and a huge amount on campus, but they just joined Conference USA. They did great. I mean, I have, you know, Scott Drew, who just won a national championship in this, but my business side, I, the woman I'm just placing in to this university is epic. And so I really, the whole fun for me, as you can tell, the passion I have, I, I my whole thing is to, if I put a person with you, Brian, they're your best friend. They're somebody that outworks you. They out, they're constantly thinking about it. They're coming up with the most creative ideas. They, they, someone you're proud of on the court, on the, in the job, off the job, everywhere you go, they're just, you know, living and doing the things that we really want someone to do. And of course, I tell people, sometimes clients turn to me and they say, hey, so can, you know, I got an inside candidate. I really love this candidate. I'm thinking that I'm, I'm going to go, can you beat my candidate? Of course. What do you mean? I go, I have the whole universe. Mm. You're telling me, listen, if my, my suggestion is that person goes straight to the finals, your inside person. So they do it and I'll present the four best. And then we'll, then you tell me who wins. Mm. And, and so um, it's, it's just, but I, but I then treat their inside candidate personally, like he's mine or she's mine. And I train them the same way. And a love on them, even though they're not, but they end up being mine, right? 
It's so much fun. This is a crazy business. How can I be in this job for 43 years? My dad did this before me and I still love it every single day. I mean, you're doing the same thing. It's just a different job. And I, I you know, I could be doing, I'm doing a, a current company that does, you know, in real estate, they, it's a, it's a fantastic company, utility concierge. And I'm doing, they, they do all the hassle. When you buy a new home, they handle all your internet, your security, your utilities, all the things you and I do not want to do anything with. And I'm in the midst of doing a president for them. And it's just a fun deal. I love my client. I love this business. They're the leader in the country, but they haven't exploded yet because they haven't gone digital. Hmm. Yeah. When they do, it's about to, it's about to rock. I mean, you said 43 years, you 43, right? Years. In yeah. The in this. Um, you clearly you've evolved, you've grown, you've, you, you've been shaped by the industry. You've shaped the industry. My question for you is, is you look back on first few years that you entered and then you look at today, how has Bob Bodine, the human changed, evolved? How are you different from when you first started? One of the greatest things is every year you, you get a chance to change. Right. And, and, and I think I'm a, I'm a big Sheryl Crow change will do you good, <laughs> you know, song person. And I think for a lot of people, the first 20 years, they're told what to do. The next 20 years, they dump it and all. And then they're trying to turn on the light that says, what the heck am I doing? And and so uh, I get people a little bit around some of that. But there's in this world, you have trouble and you can't not do it. And trouble is always interesting. It's, it's an opportunity in disguise because it forces you to get some of the rough edges. I hadn't been at Carnation uh, Company for more than three months when they told me I was going to go to Dale Carnegie. Mm. <laughs> and, and, and I thought Dale Carnegie, they, you know, what are you talking about? And so, uh, and, but I was, I was so aggressive in sales and now I'm on marketing, I'm being aggressive with them. And, and I just hadn't smoothed out the, you know, the, the aggressive tone and, and I needed to kind of do that. But Dale Carnegie was one of the greatest courses that I took. The first four or five times I went, you go like 15, 16 times to your class. You get to meet these 40. You don't know any of them. By the time you're finished, you're like best friends with most of them, right? And you, everyone gives speeches, three speeches during a night. So you're listening to them talk and you're learning how to speak by watching them fail, right? And, and watching it. So, you know, and I tell people all the time, there's no such thing as failure. It's not like a, it's, it's, it's not a person. It's an event. I mean, there's no great person who doesn't, you know, gain huge amounts of growth and freedom from the facet that you just got burned there. That my dad would take me into places just to show me that we weren't going to, that, that this, you know, that I had a guy who's telling us, so here's the way the search is going to go, Frank, Bob, we're going to, you're going to come in here on Monday, we're going to have this meeting and every Monday we're going to have updates and you're going to show me 20 candidates and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And my dad goes and listens to all because he's great. And then he turns to me and he goes, and he goes, so I'll just send over the paperwork. You guys get going. Da, da, da. My dad goes, so listen, on Monday, Bob and I are going to be just talking about it. We're not actually going to be calling you or talking about any of that. And in the first four weeks, four or five weeks, we're going to go out and make sure that we got the best candidates in the country. And of course, you don't want to do any of that. Uh, and so, and, 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 and the guy goes, so are you not going to do what we do? And my dad just stood up and shook his hand. Mm -hmm. and, and as I walked out with my dad, he just was nice. He said, no, and we didn't take the search. And he looked at me and he goes, you got to know when you can leave and say, no, you got to have a, a borders for yourself. And so the Bob Bodine who started has now had 40 years of lots of things that happened in your life. You know, I told, I did a talk on change the other day with somebody and I said, I've been married for 40 years. Um, I've been in the same job for 43 and I've been in my same house for 39 of the years. And I said, you might think I don't like change. And the answer is there's nothing in any of those three that are the same. <laughs> my business is radically different. I started up sports and entertainment. No one had ever done it before. And I've had three daughters, you know, five grandkids. I've had disasters in, in aspects, all facet in your life that 
makes you a better dad if you can adjust. I got three daughters. That that could be a whole series of just talking about how Bob Bodine's changed by my three girls changing me, right? I have an unbelievable wife. Uh, I've got, um, our house is, you know, I used to have to go out in front of my house at night because no, if I called you up back in the day, you couldn't talk because you couldn't let anyone know you're in a job. Ah, call me at home. And so I have to do a lot of my calls at night. And I had one of those like, like Marine, you know, like old day infantry people who had the phone where you had to dial it up. And I, <laughs> and I'd be out in front of my house walking with a big antenna. I mean, it's the funniest thing in the world. Now, if I call you on the phone, they're screaming out Bob Bodine's calling me on the phone because they want, they, they know that's leverage to get their next big offer. Mm. <laughs> and so, so you grow in this process, uh, you know, with your friends, with with people who who pass away, with with love, with hurt, um, in in your spiritual walk, um, you're, you know, I'm clearly, you know, hopefully a, a, a totally different, and and now it's you're so much more compassionate as you get older. You're so much better listener. You're so much. You're not. I, I'm really not interested in Bob. I, you know, I'm interested in more than you. And so, you know, I'd rather you, I want you to be really successful. And so, so I'm never trying to talk a candidate into something. I always tell candidates, listen, I'm paid whether I feel this or not. So unless I have something great, you know, I don't want you to do it. And I want you to think of our conversation today is you and I just consulting, looking at this job over here. And if I can't, bring enough that would be so good for you and your wife and your family that I let's, I said, we should just know each other because I get lots of jobs. And everyone then, I think when you calm and you relax and you create an atmosphere, okay, of, of, of actual genuine, authentic love in an atmosphere, people will be real with you as to what they really want. And they'll dream out loud with you. And then once I hear the dream, Dang it, if I knew somebody that I could help you and you just get it for free, I'm just going to introduce you. I mean, I'm not, I'm just not in for the deal. Uh, that has no interest to me. I've loved every minute of this conversation. I mean, I think at the end here, it's very clear. It's, it's never been just about work for you. It's the family, it's your children, your wife, your relationships, no matter what you do, it's, it's, the who is always at the center and, and the purpose of an individual and your opportunity to, to bring that to life in, in every arena around you is uh, special. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 I think so rare to find people who can make others, you know, find that light and light it, help them light it and uh, have a much more successful, you know, life if they, unless they cross your path. So uh, thanks for everything you've done uh, for me. Uh, without even knowing it over the last 10 years and I'm sure millions of others. And thank you for just you know, how you show up in the world. It's, it, it's noticeable and leaves a, a big impact and I've so enjoyed getting to know you. So um, thanks for your time. Uh, Bob, where can people find you? Reach out to you, find your, both your books. Um, you know, how, how do people get in touch? If they go to bobbodine.com, that's like a website they could go to. Um, every single day, I try to I try um, to go and do inspiration and encouragement. I've been doing that like for 16, 17 years. Uh, and and I put it up on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and uh, and Instagram. And uh, and so people can, you know, find me, message me, say hi, say they listen to the podcast. I can tell them how great you are and uh, how great your business is and all the things that are around it. I um I, I, the two books that I did, The Power Who is, is, is like now a fantastic one for people who are just trying to find their way. How do I, there, it's so much simpler. You already know everyone you need to know. People are always trying to be out there and they've been taught networking, which is not working, which is you were given specific people to help you. And then uh, this book, Two Chairs, is really special. It's, uh, it's, you know, God wouldn't let me write that for 40 years. I mean, couldn't you imagine a simpler concept that uh, the guy who created the whole world would meet you first thing in the morning and talk to you and you get a minute to talk, which we normally just, if we ever do talk to God, I mean, no one, the disciples couldn't do that. They were all asleep. Um, but if, if, but if you could, 
and you didn't just inform him all the time and listen, if you gave him four minutes to talk, um, I mean, wouldn't that be a day? And, and I tell people all the time is this is the secret that changes everything. So my whole success, as you know, and I'm boldly saying it always with people is that all my success uh, in life and business has come from, uh, you know, my relationship with God and, and, and two chairs. And so I encourage everyone to do it. People ask me all the time, what's God going to say to me at, at two chairs? And I say, I didn't write three chairs. I don't get to go. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write the power of Bob. I wrote the power of who? The people who matter in your life. And when people would, God, you just got to take care of the people you were given. And if you do, you get more. If you don't take care of the ones you're you're struggling. So mm. go. So, so my whole point in this is say hi to me on on uh, on Messenger. Say hi to me on Facebook or any of those things. And I will I, I respond to people. They say, who's doing your stuff? I am. I'm usually trying to inspire myself for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Bob, thanks so much. This is this is a treat, and um, well, we'll we'll, mem we'll remember it forever. And uh, for those listening, this is the last uh episode on the One Away Show, and uh, couldn't be uh, more thrilled to do it with someone so special. So, thanks for being here, Bob. Thank you. Appreciate you. Love you. Love you. Thank you for joining me on The One Away Show. If you enjoyed this episode as much as I did, please leave a review and follow us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Have a One Away moment you'd like to share? Follow me on Twitter or Instagram at BrianWish underscore or reach out to me on LinkedIn and tell me about the moment that altered your life. The One Away Show is produced by ArcBound a company dedicated to helping entrepreneurs, experts, and visionaries launch authentic personal brands. From message development to podcast production, social media content generation, and book writing, we work with you to create your arc. Head to arcbound.com to learn more. Thank you for listening, and please join me next time on The One Away Show.